Well, this is the plan. In here, uh, actually right up here, you can see that there are two filters. And I believe those to be fuel filters. Um, I went to Napa, told them I needed fuel filters for this engine. This is a 8V71 Detroit diesel. And they gave me these filters and the two filters that I have look very similar to these. One of them slightly shorter, has a smaller opening on it. Uh, that's this back one. That'll be the first one that I changed out, change out. And then the other one, I think is the main filter, uh, is a longer um, filter and has a larger one inch opening uh, on it, threaded opening. So I believe these are, are the right filters. And uh, our plan today is to change those out. I was able to get under the bus and uh, can reach the filters fairly easily. But what I've decided to do is I put a bottle jack underneath uh, the frame. I started the bus, uh, let the airbags air up. And then I put this bottle jack under here. Uh, that's a solid part of the frame. And I believe that will hold uh, if the airbags come down. But even when the airbags were completely down, I still had plenty of room underneath the bus. But just for safety's sake, we put a bottle jack underneath the bus and uh, that'll hold the frame up. One other thing I noticed when I was underneath the bus placing this bottle jack, and I kind of already knew this, but you see that shiny stuff on that tire on the other side? That's not good news. Uh, that means the seal on that end of the axle is leaking and I've, I've actually already seen signs of it uh, oil oil uh, spill uh, where the bus has been sitting and I kind of knew that that was going on uh, but uh, that's another project that we'll be doing we'll have to take those duels off uh, take the axle out on that side uh, pull out the old seal and we'll have to get a new seal and put it all back together so that's going to be a big job uh, for just little old me. This is the overall plan. I have a fuel transfer pump. Just bought this. Uh, I got tired of the uh, safety, quote unquote, um, nozzles that all of the gas cans and stuff now have on them. You get more gas all over you with the safety nozzle than you did when we just had an old spout and, and it's getting where anymore you can't find the spout. So I bought this thing for uh, transferring fuel, uh, gas in the, in the, uh, in the lawnmower. And uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to, uh, I have a, a, a partial bucket of diesel here. Uh, this is diesel that I took out of my tractor. Uh, when I was working on replacing a fuel line on it. Uh, so this was diesel that leaked out of the tractor. It has been setting for quite a while. And so all of the particulates that are in it have all settled to the bottom. And hopefully with this, I'll be able to just lightly dip that into the, uh, into the diesel. And then what I wanna do is I wanna pre-fill these fuel filters. And I built this little box uh, just to hold the filters. And uh, my plan is, uh, because I'm working here by myself, uh, I didn't want to get diesel all over the place if I can help it. Um, and my bucket may be able to reach under there. And So when we screw off an old filter, uh, I will take that filter out and we'll dump it into that bucket. But I will have already pre-filled these filters and we'll wipe a little diesel around the, the top of the seal here. Uh, and with this box that I built that'll hold on to these uh, filters, uh, I'll be able to grab that filter, that full filter out of there and hopefully get it back up underneath there and just screw it right back on. Uh, with very little hassle um, and I'm not sure what's going to happen when I take one of these filters off 
there's 144 gallons of diesel sitting in the tank at the front of the bus, um, and I'm thinking that that may uh, exert a certain amount of pressure uh, on the diesel lines. I don't see anywhere uh, to be able to shut off uh, the diesel. Uh, so uh, we're gonna be back under there somewhere. Can't see, oh, right there. Yeah, that's the first one. First one's right there, second one's right there. So they're pretty accessible. Uh, we'll take the smaller one off first and see what happens. And then we'll tackle the bigger one and uh, see how it goes from there. Hopefully my phone doesn't come loose here. It's kind of windy out. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't blow my phone off. If it starts to fall and lands in the diesel. Insurance claim. Anyway, we're going to start uh, by gloving up just to uh, keep my hands clean as much as possible. This pump is battery operated, so all I have to do is turn it on. And if I now hopefully I'm going to be able to have some control here, but I'm seeing this pump is kind of agitating the, the diesel. So, I may have to go with plan B. And what is plan B? Well, we're going to let this diesel drain out. Trying to get all the diesel to drain out of this pump. This is plan B. I've come out here to my tractor. Uh, it's got, I don't know, three quarters of a tank of diesel in it. And I know the diesel in there will be clean. And I brought my box out here. Uh, I may move it over here to the top of the tractor just because that may be a little more stable. But I, I got really have more access to it there. So we'll turn the pump on. We'll fill these filters up uh, at least enough that they're they're pretty much full. Uh, so anyway, let's let's do that.
pushing the diesel back down into the tank from the hose, empty the hose out. All right, this uh, little short one kind of overfilled it slightly, so we're gonna be careful. I'm gonna take this back to the, uh, to the bus. There we go. Why is it that plan B's always seem to work out better than plan A's? So the filters are full, and so now we'll be about uh, taking the old ones off and replacing these. Well, that went fairly well. Now we'll tackle the big one.
Well, that went about as well as could be expected. Uh, I like my box, I'll hang on to it, and uh, I'll use it the next time I change out filters. Uh, I was just looking at both of these filters, and you see, well, not too bad on this one, but on the previous one, the, the other filter, um, you know uh, my last video on the uh, fuel sensor changing out and how rusted that thing was. Well, I cannot help but think that some of that rust was flaking off into the tank and uh, ultimately ending up down at these filters. So these filters do a, a fantastic job of keeping crap like that out of the engine. And, but now we have two new fuel filters. Uh, the little one's right there, and the other one is in front of that. Uh, I don't see anything leaking out of it, but uh, the big test is going to be uh, in this filter here. <laughs> I just found out that that is actually a filter for the antifreeze. Uh, so I'll have to get a part number on that and uh, see if I can't get one of those through, uh, through NAPA. But, uh, you know, this is part of bus ownership, you know, you have to do regular maintenance on them and, and this is my first time uh, doing any of the maintenance on this engine. So uh, eventually we're going to have to change out oil and uh, so this fuel filter is just one of the, one of the things to get done. Uh, and a little more diesel in the waste bucket. Uh, some point in time I'd like to try and filter that out and maybe use it in one of my tractors or something but but now let's see if this thing's gonna start up and see how much air we introduced into the system all right I've turned the uh, main power switch on made sure the transmission was in neutral and we have a remote start in the back here so we got it on engine run and front front start is up so we turn it to off and then rear start remote control up.
I would call that a successful operation. Now let's see if we can get this bottle jack out from underneath the bus. Okay, I think we'll call this good. Mileage on the Hubble meter, Hubometer, 64,256.7. 64,256.7 miles.